I've just added an update for uh, the Jimmy Momo Zones adding um, labels so that you can tell uh, where, where if, if you're using these on a higher frame, you can tell what date it was generated and what the period is. So these were both um, 928, 22. This is a one day line and this is a, a 30 minute line. So this is another way of, of helping you. You can always change the the settings to, to be a different kind of line, right? I mean, you can make it a, a, a whatever, I mean, however, whatever line style you want. Um, although one thing I've noticed is sometimes the line styles get stuck and you actually have to delete the um, study and re-add it to get the line styles to update. Um, and I've kind of gone through this phase of adding labels to everything. Um, but it was I, I've got all of these different ways of labeling my my zones that um, I kept having to you know I mean it's easy enough to right click on it and see, but I wanted to know what the what the dates were you know when they when they started because um, that will tell me something about it. I mean this is this is an interesting um, way of looking at you know the age of them versus how strong they are you know I mean if they're if they're older um, like an older 30 minute might be a little stronger than a more recent 30 minute um, only because it's it's been unchallenged longer um, but it is nice to know when they when they started and especially when you're looking at, at like much further back um, there are some on here that that go um, actually I think I changed this to be more recent anyway but um, you can you can see the the different dates um, that, that you know go back in time so you can you can see the last time this this price area was revisited um, but this actually looks simple but it was relatively difficult to program um, so what I what I did um, because they don't have a lot of um, string functions you have to really mess with how all of this stuff is is set up um, and then I had to duplicate that 20 times because each one of these is its own thing so um, I do have another video about how this is programmed and, and you know how it works, um, but the the gist of it is we're doing a plot of a line. If you've decided to show lines, but this 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 all just sort of shows where this level should be based on a, a bar number. Um, so if this if this um, is the initiating bar, then we'll set the bar number to this bar number, and then um, later if we're above that that bar number, um, we'll will show the the uh, cloud so if it's you know the the show cloud functions are um, if the the bar number is greater than or equal to this this uh, one bar number um, which works great and it works for for all of these I mean you can see they're all they're all set up the same way um, but what I added you can see this huge block here um, which is ugly and I wish there was a way to do functions that would let you output a string but you can't when you, I mean you can you can add a, a script I, I've got this in a couple of other studies where um, it, it acts like a function call but it can only output a plot and so that's a number not a, not a, a, a string which doesn't really help me here because there's no way of turning this into a, a function so you just have to like copy it out every single time um, and, and this is just for the period. So I, I'm going to um, run through that in a minute, but I wanted to look at the, the date um, and how I generated the date because the way that dates work in um, TOS is kind of funky. There's a lot of different ways that you can do date and time. Um, there's the, the get year, month, day, which will return um, like 2022 for the 2022 and then like 0930 for the month and day um, which is fine it's just a number and it's a and it's a great way of of um, you know comparing dates quickly um, but it, it's not great for trying to um, get a, like output a date um, and, and you do have other functions like get month get get day uh, uh, get day of month and then get year um, which will all give you those those values per candle, but you have to you have to set it up right. Um, so what I did was this this G5Y is going to be my kind of temporary year candidate just because I wanted to split these out. Um, but if our button is this um, this clouds button number or bar number, then then we do a get year on it. And and these these are just like the the user flag. So if they have show label set up and then show label data is one that wasn't optional, I, I, I turned it off. 
um, but it's in here just to, to um, reduce processing because I don't want to do a get your function call if I don't have to. So instead of doing the get your function call, if these bars aren't equal, it just skips to picking up the last value and putting it in. Um, so in terms of processing time, this is a lot less intensive to, to have an if statement as opposed to always getting a year um, or doing that, that test. Um, and this, this is true here too, like where you do the, the get five year. So we, we um, have, our, have our user label, so our, our user options. So this is the, the drop down at the top where whether you want to show the label or not. So if we're showing the label, then we'll do the, the modulo. So this was actually kind of interesting. So the G5Y is a get year, and this is going to be 2022. The problem with the way TOS works is that it always wants to make them numeric. So it's 2, 0, 2, 2, which is irritating because, I mean, it, yes, it's 2022. Li like, literally, that's where you would put the comma, but it's it's a, a, a date. So you, you would, I mean, that's not how it works. Um, and plus, I wanted a shorter date. I just wanted the last two, you know, because if it's if it's 1998, I just want it to be like, you know, um, 010198 instead of having the full year. Um, so what I what I did was I used the, the the modulo. So this is how you would take a year to get the last two digits of it. You would modulo the year by a hundred, and it'll just give you the last the, the remainder, right? So um, it'll it'll cut off the the you know if it's 2022, it'll cut off the 20. If it's 1985, it'll cut off the 19 because you're you're taking the remainder of a of, of this divided by a hundred, um, which is going to be the the years, um, which is just the 85 or 22 or whatever. Um, otherwise, I set it to zero because um, if we're like it, it doesn't really matter unless we are in 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 this bar number anyway. It should just be zero because later we'll do. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get the, the, you know, dates set up exactly, you know, with, with the string here. Um, so we only do this again. We only do this if we're showing a label in the first place. So we don't have to do this processing every single time, even though like, you know, the, the, the date would be a zero before this or, or null or whatever. We just skip over that. So we don't even do this processing if it's a, this is just a yes, no question. And if it's no, we move on. Um, and, the, and it's the same thing with the get month and get day of month. Um, Curdate is just like on every candle, I do a, a, a get yyymmdd function to get the current date on, on every candle. So if, if on this candle, if we are um, on this candle and showing labels, then we do the get month and get day of month based on that, that current date for this candle. Um, so this, this will apply to the date as of this candle, and that's how that's how you get a date for the candle. Um, and then when you go to to show it, I, I have I added a label offset, so we're going to take the highest button uh, bar number, um, subtract the label offset. So if it's zero, it'll show up all the way to the right hand side. Um, otherwise, you can offset it by however this much is, and and that'll let you sort of dial in based on your expansion um, number of expansion bars, uh, how how far it shows off of the price action. Um, and then it'll it'll the, the the bubble. This is the level. So like when you add a chart bubble, the first the first um, parameter of it is whether you're going to show it or not. So we have like if this is the um, the right bar number, then we'll show it. And if we're showing labels, then we'll show it. So this is a yes or no question. The next one is the level on the chart that you're putting the bubble in, and we want to put this in on the line. Um, and that's the whatever, whatever, whichever one of these lines, um, this is the plot for that line. So if you're not showing lines, this won't show up. Um, and then if we're uh, showing a label date, then we just start wrapping these things into a string. So it's the, the month slash day slash year. And remember, this is that modulo 100. So this is going to be a, a two date year. So 22. Um, and then if we show the label period, th 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 so this is the other half of this is um, this is, a, a, again, not part of the study. It's, um, uh, it was an input, so you could either show the period or the date or both or whatever. And, and I just realized that since I'm processing all of this stuff as if-then statements anyway, it doesn't really matter, and I'll just show them both. It's not that much data. Um, so if, if absolute time scale, um, all of these are going to be absolute time scales because the way it's set up up here, it's it's not an input. Um, I used to have it be optional, and it would use the absolute time or would use the time scale of the current um, whatever the current chart period is. But I switched it to be 
uh, absolute time scale for all of them because why not? I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. You just use, you, you know, you can change it to the current time scale if you want to. Um, but it just makes it a lot simpler of a, of a user interface. Um, so anyway, back down here, now we, since we are using the absolute time scale, um, and, and this is just to be like forwards compatible in case I want to add that as an option back in. Um, but if that the, the time scale that they've picked is the aggregation period dot day, then we're going to output 1D. So this is where we, we translate these, these aggregation periods into a string. And so I just went through all of the ones that they had. And, and the easiest way to do this is to start with a line, um, like if you wanted to add another one, if, if you didn't have them all in here, you would, whoops, that jumped. Um, so what I would do is just just have um, my my code completion turned on, um, hit D, and then this I just went through this list. So I, I went through all of these, and it's like you get down to the bottom, and it's like okay, so the last one is aggregation period year. And then you hit that, and then your computer freezes for a while while it thinks about what it's doing. Um, but then it then it dumps in all of them. So then then you can decide you know then one why. Um, so if, for whatever reason the aggregation period isn't correct, it isn't within the list of the ones that they offer, um, then I'm just going to output question marks because something weird has happened. And and this is this this could be like if you're not using um, an absolute time scale, then um, absolute time scale is not going to matter for whatever. And so we would switch that to whatever the current time scale is, and that could be like a six minute chart, which is not one of their constants. So you will not be able to, to tell. I mean, you, you, you could do more. Um, if you wanted to add a, a six minute, you would actually have to add the math to figure out what this, and this is in milliseconds. Um, so you would have to figure out the, the current chart aggregation period in milliseconds and then and then drill it down to like how many minutes it is and then put in the number of minutes so you can figure it out but I'm not going to because um, the absolute time scale is a drop down and it's it's just gonna be the ones that they they have so if they ever added one to this list then I would have to manually add these back in um, but that's not that hard to do so then and, and again I mean this this just changes the color based on the the um, open and wick so it's uh, the the where where it's drawing it if the open is above the wick that means that um, it's a, a green candle so it's going to draw it as green which means that it's long but if the open is below the wick that means it's a red candle uh, because the, the the wick is at the top um, and then we paint it red um, so that's that's how the the it's drawing out these labels, um, which I thought was kind of cool, and and it did take some time to figure out exactly how to do this. Um, but the key to the year is this modulo one hundred. So if you're ever doing a date, um, that's how I would do it because it's easy enough to to get it to um, print out without having to jump through a bunch of hoops with the ways that it deals with dates. You can just get the year. And then chop off the first two digits of it with the the, the, the module, and then you can see that that like these um, because this is a this is a green one. Um, way back when, you know, on on nine twenty eight, the daily candle was a was a green one, and and um, you know you can go verify that these actually work. But it's kind of cool to see when the date is because uh, that's that'll help me look at these. Um, you know, the nine twenty eight versus the nine thirty. I might spend a little more time you know, trying to short this here as this is coming back up. Um, and it definitely respects this one pretty, pretty well and just sort of blows through this one. Um, so, you know, who, who knows? Um, but you just need to play with it and see how it works for you. Um, but anyway, that's how, that's how I did the uh, date and period in each one of these.